Well, you actually gave me my first break. You gave me the expert's view column back in the amateur photographer days when I was um, a struggling, I wasn't struggling professional. I guess I wasn't professional at all. I was in another career and I knew I wanted to be a professional wildlife photographer. I just couldn't see a way of doing it. So I just went out there, got lots and lots of pictures of difficult stuff, badgers, foxes, things like this. And I won a couple of big awards, uh, one of which was an elephant and stuff like that. And it really got my name uh, on the map and it got me an agent which was really important in those days and it got me a magazine column well, yeah. and I still thank you for and I'm sorry I apologize in advance it's his fault you, you can learn the processing side that's easy right you can you can learn that for any one of million internet tutorials you can't learn the empathy with animals um, and you can tell the people that do wildlife photography so they can wear the wildlife photographer badge and the people that genuinely just want to spend their life with animals and I'm basically an animal hugger that's what I want to do I want to spend my whole life photographing um, animals and also aircraft I should add as well um, and I just want to I just want to so I guess I want to spend my days you know and photography allows me a reason to do that where I can justify it to the tax man. My life is very lucky if I'm honest um, I understand that a lot of my friends have normal jobs normal careers normal lives I'm very lucky that I do have that I have a wonderful family my partner and my daughter I love them both very much indeed and I love spending time but also I have the part of me that needs to travel and see wildlife and whether that's in the UK or to far-flung places in the world I just love being there with the animals that I guess I've grown up wanting to always be with so I'm very lucky in my lifestyle that I get to pick and choose where I go we don't get commissions these days as wildlife photographers I think if someone rang me up and said we've got a commission for you I'd think it was a friend putting on a funny voice uh, it just doesn't happen in in my game so I have to be creative and think of ways of making money because at the end of the day travel costs money mortgages cost money little daughters cost money so i have to be able to yeah, make a decent living which i'm lucky i do okay. i love polar bears and it's as simple as that i did my first polar bear trip way back in the day i can't remember when that was it was a long time ago uh, it was on a snowmobile i camped on the ice um, we had wonderful encounters of polar bears i wasn't as good a photographer I hope as I am now so I didn't make the best opportunities then I look back and think oh why did you do that but the good thing is I self-filmed a lot of it and it got me a tv series part of which I am happy about and part of which I'll always regret <laughs> about how you appear on tv um, so really that started my love of polar bears and it's continued right to the present day yeah literally a week ago um, I was in the middle of the sea ice uh, on the far east of Svalbard and having the absolute time of my life with the mother and cubs uh, just it was just the most wonderful few days that I think I've ever had with polar bears. I love sea ice. I love seeing sea ice. Of course, it's you know in the news of climate change. I don't go there for that. I go there because it resets me. I don't have a phone for 14 days. There's no phone signal, no internet, nothing. It's brilliant, and I get just to think about photography and also help my clients photography. And on this trip particularly, of course, I had the um, Olympus, which is the first time I'd taken it to do polar bears. It was really useful because. This of course is a, a 600mm lens on the system and it's a 600mm lens that I can actually hold and it means I can get it into ridiculous positions in the ship. The smallest hole looking out to the ice I can get it through and I can even use the screen just to take a picture. Now gone are the days where I've got this massive lens that I can hardly use and I can't fit anywhere, it needs to be on a tripod. I was so mobile with it I could do anything and I, was, I think it really inspired me to do some of my best polar bear work ever. Um, one of my particular favourites from the trip is with a fisheye. And I kind of leant over the front and I couldn't see because all my clients get priority, they were in the front. So I held the camera over the top and just used the screen with a fisheye to get this, uh, this wonderful shot of the polar bears coming towards us on a piece of ice. Beautiful fisheye shot, beautiful landscape behind sunset. It's going to be a very iconic picture for me, I think. And it was, it was because the system is so flexible. Yeah, I was surprised because, of course, you hear a lot of bad things about the, the Micro Four Thirds. It's not, it's not the same as full frame. It's not going to be the same as full frame. It's a much smaller sensor. But for me, the advantages outweigh everything. But I still need really good image quality because I'm still selling my pictures as a pro. You know, I don't make my living as a, as a tour guide. I'm a professional wildlife photographer and I sell my images via my agencies. So they have to be good. And I question these days how good a picture needs to be to actually sell it. I only need 50 megabytes. I only need an A3 image. That's what I need in a, to be sharp and well exposed. This produces everything that I need. And I think it's a question of realizing in yourself, you don't need more megapixels. You just need basically a sharp image for your clients. And that's what I do. 
Well, yeah, on a Zodiac course, when I'm, I'm, you know, we're out on a Zodiac, it's bouncing around. We had one time we've had a walrus carcass on the shore with a mother and two big cubs. It's wonderful conditions, wonderful light. Uh, but the, the wind was unbelievable. It's worse than here today. It was knocking us in the air. But of course, with the, with the stabilization, um, I'm, I, I can really keep it still and I can really get a nice sharp image where the big lenses, which you need to use, you know, the fives and six hundreds next to me are bouncing everywhere. It, it, it just made a big difference. And it's even my dodgy video, you know, and I'm not going to be anywhere near a video star in any way, but even my video is stable and that's a miracle. Yeah, I love India and I have one of my best friends lives there. I have an affinity with some tigers there. I, my whole career has been built around um, having muses. You know, like a portrait dog has a muse. They always photograph it. Well, I do the same in the animal world. So I go back and photograph the same animal throughout its life. And these are named animals. I, I have a particular love of some tigers in Ranthambore, one called Noor, who I just did a book on. Um, and I just, just love being there. There's something about being with tigers. And of course, I know that my pictures you know, I'm not the greatest conservationist. I don't mean that I'm not for conservation. Of course I am. But I don't know what to do. I'm just a photographer. But my pictures can get used by people that do know what to do with them. So like my tiger pictures, I know are used by people for good. And for me, that's really important. And I like to take atmospheric images. It's my thing. I don't like to take nice, pretty pictures. That's, that's not my thing. I want atmospheric images, hard images. So I had this uh, tigress, who is Noor's daughter, walk along a track. I saw the dappled light and I saw the dark light behind. So in the viewfinder, the great thing about mirrorless is what you see is what you get. So I can adjust the exposure in the viewfinder and look at the light meter and see exactly what I want and then take it. And I don't even need to check it. I know it's exactly what I've got. So that's what I did with several of pictures of Olive one morning. It was just these spectacular conditions. And I almost didn't need to process them. They came out of the camera exactly as I wanted them. And it saves me time, which is exactly what I want.